Welcome to Intro to Sub-D Modeling Part 2. I'm John Hardigan. I'll pick up with modeling some legs for our monster. In addition to using some familiar tools like Extrude and Insert Edge Loop, we'll also use Crease. So I'll start by showing you, as always in Alias, there's more than one way to, to model. So I'll just start with Sub-D Tools, and I'll go to Extrude, and Sub-D Faces. Let's move that over there. And then just select these two faces on the bottom here. And again, I do have symmetrical modeling on. You can see that it is lit up in blue on the other side. And I'm going to hit a scale cube so that I can now do proportional scaling. Hit the space bar and pull that out again. Now, uh, this is okay. It's not a bad approach, but it, it's just not what I'm looking for. There's going to be extra modeling here that I, I don't want to do. So let's undo that. And let's start by adding an edge loop. Inserting an edge loop, sorry. Oh, did that wrong. We want to use perpendicular, at least that's my choice, and edge flow. There we go, put that in. And now we'll go back to extrude, and I'll select this face and this face. And I'm going to pull those out globally. I just want to pull that down. And there we go. This is this just looks better to me. So now you can see that the bottom of our feet are rounded off and of course the image has a flat area to the foot. So this is where the crease tool comes in. I'm going to pick an edge loop and I'm oh, looks like it's already selected for me, but I'm going to undo it just so you can see me do that. And pick this, 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 there we go. And I'm going to go to the crease tool and you can see that that's flattened that right out. We'll, we'll fix this. We'll make it on the grid here in a moment. But also I'd like to change the inside of the leg because you can see it's got a hard intersection there too. So I'm going to select this edge loop and do the same thing. Just select crease. And I'll go to the front view and you can see we're really getting into shape here. Now I'll put the grid back on. I'll go to show and grid and I'm going to need to use transform CV here because if I try to select these vertices Oops, let's do that again and go to the transform tool. You can see that the pivot point is an average of all of these vertices. So I don't want that because if I try to snap to this grid, it's not going to work, at least getting all of them in one shot. So what I'm going to do is select the vertices again and I'm going to use transform CV. I hit the space bar for the hotspot, make sure that we're on X, Y, Z, and points. And now I'll hold the Alt key and right click on the grid, and you can see that they all snap right to it. And let's turn that grid off because it's just in the way. And now I can just start moving vertices around. So I'll grab all of these to start with. Just pull them over a bit. Okay, and then maybe just all of these. And there, that looks good. Maybe just these guys. And I'm going to, again, leave the foot a little bit wider, just in case you want to 3D print this guy. We'll have something good to stand on. Uh, that's going to be close enough for now. And now you can see that we're really off of the image here. So I'm going to grab this edge loop. And I'm going to transform that. And I'm going to use pivot for that, I think. Oh, I've got more selected than I wanted again. Really easy to do. <laughs> I'll pick this edge loop, transform, and we will use global. Yeah, let's pull this down about there, and then I'll scale him out right about there. And that looks pretty good. Looks good in the front view. Looks pretty good in the side view. Of course, you'll want to continue to tweak, but uh, this is a good start. So again, we've covered familiar tools like extrude, insert edge loop, uh, transform, and we also used crease. So in the next video, we'll start over here and give this guy some arms. Thanks for watching.